All right, everyone, um, it's a couple minutes past two o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific here. And so we're going to get started with our live webinar on optimizing your buyer's journey. So thank you, everyone, for joining live here. And this will be recorded as well. And so those folks will get a chance to uh, listen to this offline. But uh, I'm going to be your host for this webinar today. My name is Justin Dilley. I'm the head of product here for Full Story. And a little bit about myself and my background in product management. Um, I've got a really, I would say, diverse set of product experiences. I've been in the B2B product space um, and helped manage and run a number of software product teams at Amazon, building software for their Kindle Fire devices, and most recently at Home Depot, uh, managing their mobile app team. I even have a little bit of B2B to C experiences um, helping start the Amazon Dash Replenishment Service at Amazon. But now I'm here in the exciting world of B2B SaaS uh, with Full Story. And so um, it's just really exciting to, to be here. And that's just a little bit about me. But I'm also pleased to be joined by Charlie Liang, who is the head of demand generation for Keep Analytics. Um, so hello, Charlie. Thanks for joining us. And I'll flip it over to you, and you can just do a quick uh, introduction. Hey, everyone. Yeah, as, uh, thank you, Justin. A pleasure to be presenting alongside you today. Uh, so I'm, I'm Charlie Liang. I'm the head of demand generation at Heap. Um, have kind of in my eight plus years uh, in my career, have been you know focused mostly on growth roles and you know optimizing for conversions on websites. Uh, you know, working very closely with product teams. Happy to kind of share my learnings, um, some of my learnings today, and uh, yeah, um, and, and, and talk to everyone today. Great. Thanks, Charlie. Appreciate it. Definitely glad to be uh, sharing this time here with you and, and have an opportunity to share out some of our experiences on optimizing your buyer's journey. But I'll just get started here and tell you a little bit more about Full Story if you're not, if the audience isn't uh, totally familiar. So Full Story is a customer experience platform uh, that records and reproduces real user experiences on your site. So we call this uh, technology session replay, and it's really the foundation um, in a lot of ways of combining your ability to watch and, and actually see your customers' experiences kind of through their eyes or through their browser and being able to see all of their events, every click, every visit, every single thing that they do on your website and understanding um, how they're interacting with your website makes it easy to support your customers, makes it easy to boost your conversion rates, which we'll be talking a lot about today. And so that is a really powerful tool uh, to put in your uh, bag of tricks as a product manager, designer, or engineer, um, and especially when you use it in conjunction with a analytics product like Heap, you really can debug all of these hairy problems um, that everyone deals with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, uh, Charlie, why don't you tell us a little bit more about um, Heap in case some of the audience isn't uh, really familiar with what, what Heap does? Yeah, thanks so much, Justin. And uh, I, I think um, if you could actually advance to the fourth slide, um, but I think Heap uh, essentially helps businesses uh, make uh, get better insights from their data. Um, so Heap, um, you know, Heap secret sauce is really kind of just the ability to auto capture every single behavior that your uh, prospect and buyers take on your on your website and, and mobile apps, and and then we help you aggregate that data and then send it to either your data warehouse or do reporting right there inside of Heap. Uh, and I think with Heap and a, a, a session replay tool um, like Full Story, you can have very powerful insights about exactly what your buyers are doing, um, so that you can properly converge rate optimize and 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 you know make sure that there's no drop off um, in your shopping cart and and in your buyer's journey. Great, thanks, Charlie. Super helpful uh, context here into how kind of. Heap and, and Full Story work in combination with one another. But we're going to jump right into the content here about uh, the buyer's journey and how you can optimize and understand your buyer's journey to increase conversion, increase and understand engagement, or maybe signups. Um, and so 
you know, you signed up for this webinar because you're interested in understanding the buyer's journey. And really, you must believe, and hopefully you do believe, because I know that Charlie and I do that, understanding the entire journey of a buyer is incredibly important and making sure that you have this entire journey mapped out and understood so that you can start to decompose this and really start to make material changes to optimize the entire experience. I think, you know, what tends to happen, and Charlie, I don't know if this is your perspective in chatting with some of your customers, but we get overly focused on just that maybe the checkout or purchase experience or maybe just the sign up uh, flow itself, but it's really this entire journey that you need to think about. And all of the steps involved in this journey, there are a lot of things that happen even before a customer gets in checkout. So they could be signing up or creating an account. They could be searching for products or information, reading reviews, comparing items. I mean, just about a million different things before they actually decide to get in and make a purchase. And so understanding that, managing that, being able to affect change along this entire journey for all your customers, we think, and hopefully you think as well, is an incredibly important thing to do. And so when you want to know that your buyers are on the right path that you had set out, it is incredibly important because it is what customers want. And the bar for their experiences uh, with the entire web really is just increasing and getting higher and higher and their expectations are changing with strong competition from folks like Amazon and eBay. And so making sure that your customers have an excellent experience when they visit your site is a way to defend against the competition and really satisfy the needs of your customers. Actually, in fact, um, there's a stat that by 2020, customer experience will actually overtake the price and the product as a key brand dif differentiator. And so if you think about these two stats here, that 93% of customers consider the visual appearance of a particular website to be a big factor in if they decide to purchase, as well as companies that have a very clear strategy for their buyer's journey can actually increase the return on their investments by 53%. And so th these are just some of the things and some of the wisdom that hopefully Charlie and I can give you that can really have a broad impact on how you manage your business or how you think about your product and service. Um, and so quick agenda for today is we're gonna start, Charlie's gonna walk through some of the buying behavior from browsing to checkout funnel, uh, along with some of the common issues that companies encounter while they're on their journey. Um, and then I'll dive into how to figure out uh, which of these issues are affecting your customers, how broad are these issues, uh, bringing down and how are they bringing down your conversion rates? We've got some interesting examples uh, from a handful of our customers. And then I'll talk a little bit about how to really dive in and analyze some of those silent conversion killers that are lurking in your customer's experience that may be frustrating them and really keeping them from buying or signing up for your product or service. So Charlie, I'm gonna uh, toss it over to you to get into the five common problems in your buyer's journey. Yeah, thanks, Justin. That's that's perfect. Um, and and thank you for setting the stage. I think you're totally right in, in you know the the sense that more and more people are buying uh, online, and um, and you know the places that they shop, Amazon, um, you know eBay, and 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 other clothing stores, is is kind of where they um, where where they really have the bar. For expectations set for for kind of where they um, like the experiences that they have. So if you go to slide uh, ten, Justin, um, I want to kind of show some some stats on the really not only just kind of like where they're buying, but how they're buying, right? So the the column on the left is you know says that in two thousand um, in two thousand sixteen um, or in two thousand seventeen. 
mobile traffic accounted for 52% of all traffic to sites. Um, and, and that was, you know, just in two years that had increased to 16%. Um, but by revenue, it, it only accounts for, for half, for, for half of that. Um, 26% of all revenue on e-commerce sites are, are being done on, on mobile traffic. So, um, you know, the vast majority of revenue is still being spent on desktop. Um, and, and it's a very interesting stat because, um, it, it kind of, you know, illustrates two things. The first thing it illustrates is that um, a lot of people are, are, you know, most people are still buying on desktop, but more people are going um, on, on mobile sites to at least check out the items. But um, for whatever reason, it could be, you know, in the checkout flow, it could be due to a lack of good experience. It could be um, just not having their credit card or, or not wanting to pull their credit card out when they're, you know, um, commuting or out and about. Um, as the reason for for kind of not purchasing but visiting on a website, so it's a very interesting um, stat because you like now more than ever you need to have good experiences on both types of devices, both mobile and tablet, and also desktop. But it's also interesting because maybe the desktop checkout experience you want to put more weight into since more people since people are still spending. Um, since people are still buying there, but then the shopping experience, um, you know, maybe the thing that you want to optimize on mobile devices. Um, and then so moving on, I think, you know, in terms of acquisition channels, this is also interesting. So there's two stats. One is the average acquisition um, or the average conversion rate by acquisition channel. And then the right hand column is what the top 10% are actually getting from those same channels. So I want to call out the delta between um, the average conversion rate. You know, email is by far the the best conversion uh, converting channel across the board. But what's also interesting is that the top 10% are getting um, almost 4x out of email compared to their their counterparts. Um, so what this tells me is that a proper email um, you know, buyer's journey. If you already have, you know, people's emails, they're probably a, a repeat buyer. So the top 10% are getting a lot more out of their repeat buyers than they are, um, you know, than, than on average. But in terms of acquisition channel in general, on average, there's really not that much difference between organic, direct, um, you know, and the PPC channels. Um, I, although Google PPC, um, the top 10% have a higher conversion rate versus um, via Facebook PPC. So that tells me um, that if, if you're going to, you know, choose between Google PPC and, and Facebook PPC, you probably want to spend more time optimizing um, for Google PPC since the the return, um, the ceiling for return might be higher. So your mileage may vary, but definitely interesting stats to kind of take a look at. And Charlie, do you, I mean, do you think this kind of means that the people uh, should think about the experiences of each of these channels in kind of a slightly different way? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Um, I, I think it's a really good point. I think that, um, like, if you use broad strokes, you can use broad strokes, you know, with analytics tools to kind of pain point, to, to pinpoint where people are falling off, but you really don't have a good way of, um, you know, investigating it more closely um, if you don't have, a you know if, if you don't measure all their buying behavior and if you don't have a, a way to kind of replay kind of like what what the people are, are are really doing that's causing this drop off I think I think you you know there's a lot of learnings to be learned that um, you know from that as you're investigating uh, across channels that oh, makes sense awesome so uh, another stat I wanted to point out is um, so this is you know obviously e-commerce stats um, you know, given that it's a checkout flow, but these these stats, if you're not in e-commerce, you can probably apply to different, um, you know, your like whether you're in SaaS or or, or fintech or or some other, um, you know, industry. Like you can apply this as well. Basically, what this is saying is the average 69% is the average cart abandonment rate. So it means that three out of ten people that begin your checkout flow actually finish your checkout flow, and that's a really concerning stat because. That's not a, like if you got 30% on a test, 
that's not really good. I think you would get an F, you know, in, in, in most grading systems. So how do you really level up your, your game, right? And, and how do you really um, deeply understand, you know, what's broken in your checkout flow and, and the top reasons why? Well, I, I've made it a little easy. Um, I, I, I pulled um, something from a research study. Next slide, Justin. Um, from uh, actually Boehner.com. Um, that says the top reasons for cart abandonment are as follows. So a lot of this might be intuitive, but it's also interesting to see kind of like how many um, people cite, like the difference between 60% and 4%, that's a huge range. So I would focus, um, you know, mainly on the top three to five reasons to get the best, uh, to get the best bang for your buck, especially this holiday season. So, um, you know, most people cite extra costs too high, so there are a lot of like surprise fees. Um, I, I, I take a look at this as the, the southwest.com model, right? Um, their whole model is, is transparency, so um, it, you know, basically like what you see on, um, before you add a, a plane ticket to your cart um, is, is, is what you're gonna pay for later on. And StubHub, had, I know, has done some experimentation around this as well. Um, and in general, the consensus is, e even though there might be a little bit more sticker shop shock up front, you're, you're less likely to lose people um, down the funnel because there's no surprise costs that are added on to the cost of their purchase. Um, and then, and then you know, this might be more straightforward, but um, the site, you know, asked for uh, an account creation. So I always, you know, recommend having a guest checkout flow versus, a, um, uh, you know, having to sign up for an account. People want that option. Uh, not everyone wants to give you, you know, kind of their password and, and username. Um, and then, and then the same thing can be said for the, uh, a long and complicated checkout process. Um, but every website is different. So I think it's, you know, again, I think it's, you know, this kind of just speaks to me the importance of just being able to measure everything so that you can, um, really understand what's causing your buyers to abandon your cart. Uh, and then, so on the next slide, um, I, I talk about kind of the, the session duration. So these are kind of the average on-site engagement metrics across different channels. Um, you know, I want to focus on kind of the retail channel. Um, what's really interesting is people are looking at five different pages on average when they come to your site. You know, they're not really bouncing on the first page, which is which is definitely good to see. Um, but they're on average just spending three and a half minutes, um, you know, three and a half minutes on your site, like clicking across different pages. Now, I don't know if you guys ever have ever done the, um, you know, growing up, I used to, uh, you know, have a community swimming pool that I, I would I would go uh, to swim at. And then we would do a competition to kind of hold your breath, right? Like, you, you know, my friends and I would just see who can hold our breath the longest underwater. And I think the longest that I did was just a little bit over a minute. Um, now, I don't I don't recommend this competition. It can be dangerous. But yeah. my point is, Three and a half minutes is actually a really long time, right? If you think about how long you can hold your breath, um, chances are it's probably two to three X the longest time you can hold your breath. So three and a half minutes is a very long time. Um, if you only can measure if they started the, ch the checkout flow and if they ended the checkout flow um, and then their, their browsing behavior, you know, that's already puts you in the advanced category. But if, you, if you're only measuring that, um, you're like, just imagine, what else you're missing in those three and a half minutes. Um, so it's, it's really important to kind of understand the buying behavior and behavioral data so that you can, um, so that you can troubleshoot and, and optimize for conversions. Um, so the next slide, uh, so this is a little bit of, um, you know, secret sauce. Um, so how you do this, I think Justin's going to talk more about, um, you know, how we do this with session replay, but um, just a shameless plug here, he helps you automatically capture all the events uh, without any tracking. We call it codeless analytics so that you can just, um, you know, set it and then forget it and then do the retroactive analysis. Okay, so those are kind of just like some of the, the pain points you might experience this holiday season or, or that you might currently be experiencing with your site. Now, I want to also just kind of like further step the stage by asking, you know, we got to ask ourselves like five questions um, about our buyer's journey. Um, and I think these five questions are going to be really telling because they might unearth things that you might not be currently thinking about that can help you uh, basically drive more revenue on your website. 
Um, so the first question that I typically um, get when I talk to kind of some of our customers and just kind of at industry events is, you know, a lot of people have their buyer's journey set up as a pretty straightforward funnel. Um, it usually consists of, you know, views page, um, you know, does a conversion event, whether that's, you know, give you your, your email address or begins the checkout flow. A lot of people have, you know, different, um, you know, checkout flows to, so that there might be a couple paths here and then it's just checkout and then that's the end of the funnel. So that's what most people have it set up as. But in reality, you know, think about the last time you were on, you know, you were on Amazon.com. Put yourself in the shoes of a buyer, right? Um, where did you go to do your research uh, that Justin mentioned earlier? Um, how did you get to the site? And then once we were on the site, like, what parts of the site did you go on? Did you go on, you know, if you're an e-commerce site, did you go on the the, uh, the sales section? Did you go, like, like, which product pages did you visit? Um, and then after you added things to your cart, did you check out immediately? Or did you did you bookmark a few items and save them in your cart and 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 you know come back later on your mobile device or on your tablet um, and then and then continue browsing and did you finally check out on the desktop right so the the buyer's journey is really this this winding road more often than not it's it's you know especially as your product like if you have a um, a product that costs more the higher the cost of the product the more likely the buyer's journey looks like this winding road. Um, another question to ask yourself is, um, are you taking the right segmentation strategies on your website, right? Like we, we mentioned email is, uh, tends to be a top converting channel and surprisingly because you already have their information. So that means, you know, that's more likely to, to be a, a better fit in terms of buyers. But when, when you have their information and, and they're coming to your website, are you using this information to properly customize uh, the website and create really that experience that Justin was talking about um, in the previous section, right? Like, are you are you Amazon like in your website experience, or are you um, you know eBay in 1995, right? Like, like these are things to, to ask yourself, and you want to slice and dice. Um, you want to slice and dice your data uh, and, and and try out different things by as many segmentations as possible. Um, because without data, you don't know what's going to work and, and what's not going to work in terms of um, personalizing your buying experience. Um, another question to kind of ask yourself is, you know, we, most people are on either iPhones or Androids um, here in the States, um, but there's also, uh, if you go back, oh, actually, uh, sorry, I'm on the wrong section here. <laughs> um, no, you're good. So, yeah, I think, you know, in, in terms of the checkout flow um, on Harry's, right, are you striking when the iron's hot, right? So when people add something to their cart and, 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 and they already check out, you know, this item, especially if you, if you don't have a lot of products, it's pretty easy to be able to upsell people because if you're selling, you know, socks, maybe you can sell more socks. If you're selling athletic gear, you know, Maybe you can upsell them on a uh, on a headband, or if you're selling T-shirts, maybe you can upsell them on shorts to kind of complete the ensemble. Are you making? Are you you know? Are you lifting order volumes on your site by recommending complimentary items? Um, so this is one of um, Heap's customers, Harry's. You know, they sell uh, you know razors, but like, are you like you know instead of um, instead of just selling a razor? And, and eight blades, like, you know, maybe you offer discounts if they, if they, if they buy more razors, um, up front. All right. So are you striking when the iron's hot? Um, and then on the next slide, um, Banana Republic, uh, you know, does a really good job of this. Um, when you add a dress shirt, a men's dress shirt or, or just any, you know, item to the cart, they actually, you know, they recommend additional shirts. Um, you know, with the customer's also bought algorithm, but what's interesting is that if you examine it closely, these are all shirts that have the same fit and that have a floral pattern. So there's, there's definitely some algorithm going on in the background where they just, they don't look at just what other customers bought, but they, they take a look at items that are similar to your, um, you know, to the item that you added to the cart and then, and then recommend that. So think about how you can apply that, 
um, to your site and uh, to maximize order volume. Well, that's a nice looking shirt, Charlie. Hopefully, you uh, ended up buying that one. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was, I was, uh, I, I think right now they actually have their friends and family, so uh, I was looking at it just. Uh, <laughs> so I, I guess they were striking when the iron was hot. That's great. <laughs> awesome. So the next slide is, um, you know, buyers are coming to your site on more devices than ever. Um, so this is just um, a list of obviously the, you know, Apple and Android. Most people have Apple and Android phones, but even within those mobile devices, there's just so many different, um, you know, viewport sizes. Um, so what's good to think about is like when when people are coming to your site, um, do you know which devices and which browser and OS combinations are 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 the top visits you know to your site and are you testing for each different um, viewport size right if not then you could like you know Justin's going to talk about smoothing out you know silent um, conversion rate drop off points if you you know for example if a checkout button is is uh, you know below the full and it's you can't get to that checkout button you might you know a lot of our customers actually see that some of their mobile devices um, have zero conversion, right? So without knowing kind of like which browsers and mobile devices and viewport sizes, it's, it's hard to kind of um, tease out where your conversion rates are not optimal. Um, and then slide 23 is actually really interesting. Um, so mod cloth um, is obviously, you know, it's a clothing store. So a lot of, um, I would imagine a lot of clothing, I wish I had stats on this actually, um, but a lot of clothing stores, like more, like you probably buy more clothing on mobile than you do um, compared to the average channel, um, especially if there's a store that you know is your favorite. So it's 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 really important to kind of optimize your mobile experience um, in certain verticals. So ModCloth actually found out that um, they had a, a conversion drop off like in the in the shopping bag and they couldn't figure out why but um uh, you know on mobile it was actually you know in, in, instead of having a drop down to kind of select the quantity they actually made people type in the um you know the quantity which is obviously not ideal experience whether you're on desktop or mobile but it's even harder to do on mobile so it's it's small things like this that can actually make a huge difference in your conversion drop offs and i think without um, without measuring buying behavior and, and understanding it, you know, by investigating uh, different sessions via replay tool like Full Story, like you're you're not going to be able to, um, like you're not armed with the right things to do your investigation. So we presented a different, a lot of different problems, and everyone has conversion problems on their website. You know, even if you're crushing it and have 60% um, cart abandonment, that's you know, that sounds funny to say, but like if you have 60% card abandonment, you're actually crushing it. You still are, are you know, missing 60% of potential buyers. So I want to present a few solutions now that we have, um, you know, some problems that we've kind of painted. And, um, you know, I, I alluded to a little, this a little bit before, but without kind of tracking all of your buying behavior, um, and, and just like if you only understand topical metrics, um, like, you know, how many people added, uh, you know, your product to a cart and how many people checked out, if you only look at those metrics, it's, it's only the, the tip of the iceberg. So you kind of have to dive beneath and take a look at all the other different things that are, are causing people to kind of drop off. So the, the first way to do this is just to kind of track everything, um, you know, just track every single behavior. Um, a lot of companies don't do this or, or didn't know that solutions like Heath existed to be able to help them do this um, uh, and, and just kind of understand their buying behavior deeply. Um, and then the next slide is that a lot of buying behavior, like Justin mentioned earlier, happens before um, people actually get to your site, right? They do research on other, on, on third-party websites, they click on ads, they're on Facebook, um, and, 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 you know, they're shopping on, on review sites. That buying behavior is lost a lot of the times because there's, it's really hard to join that data, you know, especially uh, at, 
you know, an, an average person probably has two or three different uh, devices, it's really hard to kind of join all those devices and all that behavior that happens before they hit your site, uh, before they get to your site and convert on your site um, and join that with the anonymous behavior um, because there's just a lot of different things that you need to tie to the ID. So if you don't have a tool that helps you do that, um, it can be very hard to understand the full picture and have a 360 of what your customers really are doing and, and, and how they're getting to your site and the research that they're doing before your site. So make sure you have a tool that does that. And then at this point, I'm going to pass the ball back to Justin to talk about um, how session replay can help you understand your buyer's journey and, 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 and its role in conversion rate optimization. Great. Thanks, Charlie. That was a really helpful perspective. And, and hopefully folks on the webinar um, got a lot of practical tips and tricks, especially with the holiday season rolling around conversion and managing and understanding the buyer's journey you know, is going to be maybe the most critical thing that folks are working on here for the next couple months. So that was really great. And you know, I also wanted just to get, kind of start off by saying it's really the power of uh, a heap and full story that really provides that full picture um, of exactly what's going on with that buyer's journey. And so, you know, we, we do a great job complementing one another from a, a full stack, a full product stack. Um, and it's really great to be able to have both of these tools working in combination with one another so that as you look at your heap analytics and understand that there's conversion, you can dive right in in your full story data and take a look at what's going on from the customer's actual uh, customer experience. And so it's really great to be able to have both of these things and they really play and complement each other really, really well. And so now that you've got a good sense of some of the con, you know, common conversion pitfalls that websites and really everybody kind of falls uh, prey to, how do you know which one of these are really impacting your customers? And when I say that, I mean, how do you really understand and empathize with the experience those customers have? I think it's, it's one thing to, you know, you start by taking a look at all the charts and graphs you have set up in Keep or your other favorite analytics tool to start to develop a hypothesis when you see conversion rate going down. And you might look at a couple charts and a couple graphs and ultimately get to a point where you might have a hypothesis about what's going on, but you're not exactly sure what to do next. And you're not exactly sure on how to fix this particular problem and really get to the why a customer is experiencing or why you as a business is experiencing these conversion rate drops. And so you need a session replay product, at least that's kind of our view of the world, to close that gap and really help you marry the awesome value you get out of a heap analytics product, the quantitative data with full story and that qualitative perspective so that you can really diagnose, troubleshoot, and ultimately solve um, these really hairy conversion rate issues. And so let's say that you've started and you've kind of narrowed it down to a couple different areas to focus on. Um, this is the uh, full story UI here, and you can start here and build a search to really get to the segments with the user sessions that you really want. And so we've got this really powerful search capability that allows you to search through all of your data. And so if you were interested in your checkout conversion, you can start to say, well, I want to understand customers that went on that journey. So maybe they went to the home page and then a product page and then the checkout page. I want to understand that specific journey. Really the power of full stories search functionality allows you to quickly create those journeys and understand and evaluate maybe the hypothesis that you're bringing into full story. And so now that you, you don't have to just start watching a bunch of sessions, this the power of search in our world is that you can get down to the handful of sessions that really are the representative sample of what your customers are experiencing. And so you can constrain your view of the world to only focus on the set of customers and the sessions 
that really matter. And then you can start to kind of take some notes as to what's happening. And you can watch a handful of these and see are my customers experiencing any error clicks in our world? That's one of the heuristics um, that we'll capture or rage clicks. If you're not familiar with what a rage click is, it's the you know mashing of the mouse button on a button because something isn't working. These are some of the frustration metrics that bubble up when you start to take a look at some of these sessions. And so why don't you take a look at one right now? So this is a, a session um, and for from a customer that abandon a purchase from a ticketing site. So this you can imagine is a customer trying to purchase tickets and you can see that there was a problem with conversion, but this view of the world gives you a really good understanding of what needs to change to actually be able to close the gap and solve that particular conversion issue. And so when you dive into this session, you can quickly and hopefully easily see that this user is experiencing a bug. They can't select their seats. You can see them trying to click around in here um, on some of both the seats that are open and the seats that aren't open. And they really are having a really frustrating experience trying to do this. And of course, this would lead to conversion rate problems. But again, this isn't necessarily an obvious thing because these customers probably never complained that they couldn't buy. They just went to the next site or they just moved on with their lives and didn't actually end up buying tickets in this particular case. And so that session replay is now that we have this and we've identified this as a particular problem, we can back out from there and start to understand, well, how many customers across all of the data that I'm collecting on my ticketing site are experiencing these dead clicks. So the dead clicks are customers that are clicking on a particular area of the screen and expecting something to happen, but nothing is actually happening. And so when we put that information into our search criteria, we will get a number of impacted customers. And then with that, we can start to diagnose and triage and get this in the hands of the right team who can actually solve this problem. So this happens to be a bug. And so what we can do is just quickly highlight a couple sessions, share this with our engineering partners through one of maybe our integrations with JIRA and make that entire workflow really seamless so that when your engineering team pulls up this bug, they not only have the context in terms of how many customers are being impacted, but They'll also have the session URL that they can click on to see exactly what that user is, was experiencing. And it really shortens the time from identifying that there was a conversion rate issue to understanding what's, what is actually impacting that specific conversion to solving this particular problem. It's that full workflow of the identification to resolution that is really, really, really powerful. But sometimes it might not actually be, you know, as specific uh, as the bug that we just looked at. You might see that, for example, um, the site is just generally confusing. And that's not something that's just easily understood uh, by looking at, you know, your traditional kind of metrics. You really want to dig into how customers are experiencing your website. And so this is uh, an example from one of our customers, Metro Mile, who is a car insurance provider. Uh, and what they discovered was that watching some sessions and watching how customers were interacting um, on their homepage when trying to submit a quote was just really not very good. And they, their business and what their, their outcome is, is not necessarily a conversion, but it's somebody submitting some information to get a quote to hopefully purchase insurance. And so when they saw this and they really started to peel back the onion of how customers were experiencing their homepage, they realized that visitors to the homepage here actually needed to understand a little bit more about what kind of insurance um, they were being offered before they could actually take the next step of getting a quote. And so they added these simple educational steps to their homepage in terms of how to think about the insurance. Um, and they saw a really big impact 
just by adding these small tweaks through the insights that they were able to glean using full story. And it's it's just a really powerful thing that had for, for Metro Mile at least, a really big impact on folks that took that next step uh, to get a quote. And so as you're watching these sessions, you know, you're making note of bugs or issues and you're sending those to your engineering team or maybe your design team and you're formulating these hypotheses about what's going to increase your conversion and ultimately reduce frustration for your users. And then you take that information that you've gathered and you experiment with changes to the website. So I mentioned Metro Mile. They thought that education or educating customers on their homepage was the likely uh, solution to this particular problem. And it's this experimentation and this cycle of reviewing the information, watching your sessions, forming a hypothesis, launching those experiences that allows you to learn and iterate and get better uh, with your product. And so as you're thinking about using different tools for each of these buckets, you know, you can kind of think about, you know, Heap and Full Story is really centered around reviewing the analytics and watching those user experiences. Um, and then you might couple that with some of your own knowledge or some of your own information, and then maybe an A-B testing tool like Optimizely to really make the machinery of solving these conversion rate uh, issues use just a really well-oiled machine and you know allow you to have a really material impact on hopefully increasing conversion across the board and really understanding that journey so you can do um, all that and so it's really this sense of having all of this data charlie mentioned uh the ability to capture everything we take a very similar approach and so having all of the data from your websites without necessarily having to instrument it is really important to understanding and fixing uh, your buyer's journey for the better. So just one topic to end on here before we uh, open it up for questions and Charlie and I, and so feel free to just get your questions into the chat and Amy on our side will, uh, will help kind of manage those. But Charlie mentioned some of the really interesting, maybe even in some ways, um, obvious things to look at, but there are always those silent problems in your buyer's journey that add up over time. It's the little paper cuts. It's the small things that derail customers in their journey to buy something on your website that are sometimes harder to really get to the root cause of. And so now that you've got that as their context, you want to be able to deliver an incredibly compelling experience that is repeatable, that when customers come back to your site, um, hopefully they have a better experience than before. And because you're sleuthing out all of these um, you know, silent problems that are happening underneath the covers and as customer expectations are changing, as they're interacting with other sites online, they want this level of excellence from your website. And so being able to really dig deeper than you know kind of the traditional conversion funnels to sniff out these problems that are you know causing your potential buyers to leave versus reporting an actual issue that's i think you know charlie mentioned some of the stats on bounce rates and folks abandoning and check out and most people will just leave if they're not having a really good experience but you don't necessarily know all of the details around those problems but a tool like Full Story in session replay can help fill in some of those gaps. And there's these silent conversion killers that I want to just kind of end on here. And it's these three things. It's understanding how your web performance and your page speed is impacting conversion, keeping an eye on your frustration metrics at a holistic level, and as Charlie eloquently mentioned, not neglecting your mobile customers and or different browser and OS combinations. And so starting with web performance, I think we're all generally familiar with what that is, but it's really how your site performs in the eyes of your visitors, kind of how fast is your website. And you know, most people that experience a slow website, they're not gonna really stick around. They're gonna actually leave. And so 51% of shoppers say that 
slow load time is the number one reason they'll abandon a purchase and they may never come back, uh, which is a, is a really interesting set. And the shoppers' expectations have been set by these companies that have best in class products and services and websites. And so the average shopper expects the page to load in less than two seconds. And you know, 57% of customers will wait maybe three seconds before abandoning. But Charlie showed some of the stats before that the average site speed across the web is more like six seconds. And so there's this really big gap between what customers expect and what is actually being delivered. It's really figuring out how to close this gap um, is important. And that really starts with just understanding what page load is for your particular set of pages, specific pages, how does it vary versus desktop, versus mobile, versus Android and iOS? How do your most critical pages perform? Your shopping cart, your checkout, your homepage, and just understanding the performance um, of those. And, and I'm actually gonna take a use case uh, that we had internally, and it's not a surprise that we use Full Story on our own products to, to make our, our product better. And so this is a use case from our marketing site to really illustrate how page load was affecting our own conversion rates. And so Full Story is a SaaS product, and so we're not necessarily interested in getting customers to purchase a specific item. We really want them to convert from the free trial that they decide to sign up for. And so if you look at the uh, funnel on the left, we see that 15% of our customers who visited the pricing page had a first meaningful paint, which is really the first part of a, a page load time. That was actually over three seconds, um, which you know is again, not terrible, but uh, certainly plenty of room to optimize there. Um, but then you see that 15% of the people experienced more than three seconds. Uh, that really impacted conversion rate. And the conversion rate drops from 16% to 7%. And that's pretty bad. That's half the customers um, that are signing up and converting on our website. Uh, and so that's a really interesting approach to now you can understand what's happening using Full Story and be able to start to impact that. So if you break that down even just a little bit further, we noticed that a lot of customers uh, were coming to our experience on their mobile device. And it's really, it's somewhat expected that on a mobile browser, you might be a little bit slower. And so really having this analysis and understanding that what you can and can't do to make changes to your site to really optimize this is what's uh, critically important. The second thing is checking and understanding your frustration metrics. Um, you know, visitors and buyers to your website, they'll signal frustration or confusion maybe with their mouse. Um, it's a really interesting thing when you're, when you're watching these sessions and watching how people are using their mouse and highlighting text or rage clicking, dead clicking or error clicking on specific elements or specific parts of your experience or your journey. It's really understanding some of these frustration metrics and the, the power of being able to search for them, as you can see here, just simply saying, oh wow, there's a lot of our customers that are rage clicking on our purchase or add to cart experience. I wanna just take a look at those sessions and really understand the frustration that those customers are experiencing. And so this is a really easy way to highlight some of those critical journeys. So definitely don't neglect your you know, browser and operating system uh, kind of combinations and really understanding how your traffic and patterns uh, work and look. And so you know, 57% of users say they wouldn't recommend a business with a poorly designed mobile website and 61% of users are unlikely to return if they had trouble accessing it the first time and they'll just end up going to a competitor in, instead. So. We think in a very desktop world in some ways, but certainly don't neglect what's going on with your uh, you know, customers. And so here's a view of the world uh, from Heap and just get an understanding of how your business or how your site is and the majority of customers that may have a poor or frustrating experience. 
across a number of combinations. It could be the Chrome browser on Mac is your top customer. And if you look at how to prioritize some of those optimizations, you wanna really understand the conversion rates and then be able to take a look at those sessions for uh, those specific combinations as you start to prioritize uh, you know, your work on you know, these combinations. So if I wanted to look at browser was Firefox and operating system was Windows, what does that conversion rate look like? And really being able to, to dig in and, and understand that. So here's a couple just key takeaways as you guys think about, as we're kind of wrapping up the webinar here today. I think everyone would agree that cart abandonment, as Charlie mentioned, is a huge, huge problem. And so really digging deep into what's causing the drop-offs in checkout and what those experiences are within checkout is critically important. But also, optimizing the entire journey, especially during this holiday season, requires a really deep understanding and a wide net. You know, We kind of say this track everything approach. And what you wanna do is take a look at all of the events and all of the actions that are happening on your website and how those are impacting conversion. And then hopefully you believe in the concept of session replay to understand the why your buying behavior looks a certain way or validate some of your hypotheses that you can use to take forward and make changes or create better A-B tests. And then lastly, beyond kind of the high level KPIs and conversion metrics uh, and funnel analytics that you know, you're probably interested in and you're already tracking today, look for those hidden issues in your buyer's journey to find some of those conversion rate killers like web performance or these unreported bugs that cause uh, these frustration metrics like rage click and a ton more. So now uh, Charlie and I are gonna kind of open it up uh, for questions here. And so I think if you type in your questions, we will uh, kind of tag team and, and get them answered for you. All right, Charlie, you want to take the first uh, the first question here? Yeah, uh, it looks like uh, first question is for you, Justin. It looks like uh, what is one thing I could do to uh, what is one thing I could do today to start to make progress on my buyer's journey? Um, oh yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think um, you know. The, the most obvious thing is to just really understand um, your customers and, and what their journey is and map that journey out. And so, you know, building a, a checkout funnel or a, some sort of funnel in, you know, a product like Keep or Full Story, and then adding some of that frustration uh, metrics like rage clicks um, to be able to find those frustrated sessions and those frustrated customers and being able to watch those sessions is a really, really great place to start. Fantastic, that's good. Um, and another question, um, I, I guess this is directed at myself, um, uh, and then and then Justin, feel free to add in, but um, another question is, I have uh, Google Analytics, what can I get out of Heat that I don't have in GA? So that's, a, that's actually a question we get a lot. Um, at, at Heap, uh, and, and I think that um, Google Analytics was embedded in 2005, um, and it was purpose built. It was purpose built for a specific kind of audience, right? Um, if you look at Google, um, it, it was it was basically made to be able to track the performance of AdWords, um, and it it does a good job of doing that. It actually also does a good job of just telling you um, topical metrics on who's on your site, you know, referral traffic, things like that, you know, segmentation. But it wasn't purpose built for product managers and product owners and growth people um, to truly investigate like the buyer's journey. It doesn't have like like Google Analytics data is, is anonymous, whereas full story and heat data is tracked at the at the user level. And then the 
the level of granularity between the two tools um, is, is also just, you know, kind of really different. Like, for example, in Google Analytics, you can track link clicks, but you can't track which which link, like if you have multiple links of the same name on a page, you can track how many clicks on that link, but you don't know where the click is occurring. Like basic things, basic things like that just kind of allow you to, like they don't, like it can make the difference between making the right decision and setting up um, an experiment chain, um, you know, that's a positive, like in a positive direction and, and, and potentially going down uh, a rabbit hole. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, it looks like we got a question from the crowd here uh, from Hugo. So thanks for uh, submitting the question. His question is, is there a heap full story integration planned? And what I would say is it's definitely something that's our, our radar. We have a ton of overlap um, in our customers in terms of folks that use heap and full story together. Um, so nothing to really announce today, but uh, we hope to make that a ton easier and that interaction and handoff between heap and full story really, really great in the future. Yep, agreed. And and I I, I, I will add that the heap uh, product team uh, actually uses full story uh, internally to kind of just understand their uh, what people are doing inside the product. So there's while an integration would definitely make this a lot easier, there's a lot you can get out of using both tools combined. Uh, makes sense. And it looks like there's there's one more uh, question here, Charlie. You mentioned in your presentation about auto capture. Can you explain exactly how that works? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so auto capture is basically a uh, I, I think it's a heap term. You probably haven't heard of it, but basically we automatically kind of capture. I know uh, Full Story takes the same philosophy, but um, out of the box, you know, you basically just have to install a snippet and without any code, you like all the behavior data, you know, whether people start typing into a form and then drop off, um, you know, of course you get clicks and, um, and you know, swipes and, and things like that on mobile devices. That's all tracked out of the box. Um, so if and when your schema changes, if and when your like the nomenclature of different attributes change, that data isn't lost, right? Whereas normally with a with a, uh, a different tool, that data would be lost if you didn't set up the um, the funnels correctly, or or if, if the schema changed, that data would be lost. So it allows you to get a full picture because you can retroactively, um, you know, bucket events and, and and bucket names. And I think you know a, a lot of companies say the auto capture like feature is is you know is the is the one thing that they're kind of missing. Um, you know, in their stack that they don't really get from other analytics tools that they would get from um, full story heap. That makes sense. And, and, and certainly we take a, a very similar approach in terms of just a, you know, simple JavaScript snippet and then collecting and ingesting and indexing all your data to make it available for search. And then within our UI, and, and it's where we hear it a lot from our customers is in these complex single page applications, um, having all of this data and not necessarily just the event click based um, tagging is, is a really big benefit um, to them as well. All right, well, we're gonna um, wrap it up here, but we're gonna, we'll email everyone that signed up uh, for the webinar, we'll email out a recording tomorrow along with you know some follow-up resources to help you get started optimizing your buyer's journey. So hopefully you enjoyed your time with Charlie and I today. And Charlie, appreciate uh, you sharing your perspective on on optimizing the buyer's journey. Yeah, thanks for thanks everyone for spending the last hour with us. Hopefully it was informative for you. Uh, and Justin, thank you for being a, one, a wonderful uh, host and co-presenter. I right, appreciate Until it. Until next time. All right, thanks everybody.